The Washington Post has new reporting on the mindset of President Trump, telling people over the weekend there is no reason to be concerned with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. Quote, hanging out at Mar-a-Lago in his South Florida golf clubs, Trump told friends this investigation is going to be over with pretty soon, adding that his attorneys, whom he praised as brilliant, had assured him of it, according to two people familiar with the conversations there. President Trump is also drafting his own version of reality. Multiple reports led by the New York Times say he's privately reversing the admission and apology he made for saying he kisses and gropes women on a hot mic in 2005. That's the Access Hollywood tape. The Washington Post cites two people who have heard him make those comments. The Times reports that in January, shortly before his inauguration, Trump told a Republican senator he wanted to investigate the recording. Quote, we don't think that was my voice. Trump told the senator, according to a person familiar with that conversation. The Washington Post quotes a source who spoke with the president saying, it's really not me. I don't talk like that. And in recent months, Times the sources say Trump has used closed door conversations to question the authenticity of President Barack Obama's birth certificate. One senator who listened as the president revived his doubts about Obama's birth certificate chuckled on Tuesday as he recalled that conversation. The president, he said, has had a hard time letting go of his claim that Obama was not born in the United States. The senator asked not to be named to discuss private conversations. Joining us now from Washington, Pulitzer Prize winning columnist and associate editor of the Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Eugene Robinson. Um, Gene, boy, there's a lot to get through there. This is a president who can't yeah. let go of the past in so many ways, whether it's President Obama's birth certificate, the results of the election last year, or now, I guess, the Access Hollywood tape and its authenticity. Yeah, it's, I think it's more than not being able to let go of the past, Willie. And I think it's really concerning. I mean, it's it's one thing to keep up this sort of facade of, of a blustery facade and and to to make public statements that don't always make a lot of sense, but that that project this sort of strength and confidence and and uh, uh, bluster is the only word. It's it's quite another thing, though, if if the president has convinced himself. Of an alternative reality, uh, that could be that should be concerning uh, to all of us. Uh, if if he actually believes this stuff, if he actually believes, for example, that this Access Hollywood tape, which he acknowledged at the time and apologized for, uh, now in his mind it wasn't him in that bus. It wasn't him on that recording. Really, um, that that I don't know about you, but that worries me. Uh, Casey Hunt, uh, obviously, uh, this, d again, a, a apparently a real disconnect from reality has to have implications on the Hill, too, from a Republican Congress already jittery about the guy who's running their party. Well, Joe, I, what stuck out to me was, I mean, the Times referenced it as a chuckle as this senator recounted this conversation. And, you know, I have to say privately, when you when you talk to Republicans about this president, you know, they alternate between, you know, I, I don't want to say quite laughing and crying, but it feels that way. They at one minute are, you know, ah, well, this is what we are. And then, you know, on the other hand, there's this kind of underlying element of despair. And I think it's playing, you know, across the board, it's playing into their kind of desperation to pass this tax bill. They feel like it's the only thing uh, that can really save them right now. Nobody really feels like they have an understanding of what Trump's voters are going to do to them in 2018. They watched what happened in Virginia and, you know, saw a lot of evidence that 2018 is going to be a really, really difficult time for them because of this president. And all of this plays into it. And, you know, they don't really understand why the president can't get over these old controversies and why he doesn't understand that now that he's president, this it's going to be about him. This is this is not going to be about uh, you know these kind of past fights that have already been fought. And, and you know what? The president won. Uh, and so I think there's an element of confusion about why he keeps going back to Barack Obama or to Hillary Clinton's emails or all these issues that are that are settled. And Julie Pace, uh, what's what's the mood inside the White House? We've had we've had reports from inside the White House uh, uh, all, uh, talking about. In the past, Donald Trump yelling at TV sets, uh, him being uh, increasingly isolated. What's, what can you gather from your sources there? Uh, what's the state of mind right now? Well, I think it raises a really big question for a lot of staffers there, particularly the ones that, are, that have been around him for a long time. 
when do you push back? It, it, you get the feeling that when the president puts these things out there, when he says the Access Hollywood tape wasn't me, or maybe Barack Obama really wasn't born in the U.S., that no one around him is standing up and saying, no, Mr. President, that's not true. That has been the climate there. Some of it is because staffers know that the president can lash out at them. Uh, they know that he can turn on people who are even very close to him very quickly. So there is some, some reluctance to push back. But that was one of the things that John Kelly was supposed to bring to this White House. He was supposed to be the truth teller. He was supposed to be a person who could speak to the president almost as an equal. Uh, but based on this, this really strong reporting that we've seen from the Times, it doesn't appear that that's happening right now. Now. So, Gene, you write this in your latest column for the Washington Post titled, We Will All Pay a Price for Trump's Nihilism. Quote, it may take years to rebuild what President Trump and his minions are destroying. This is not the systematic move towards small government that conservatives have long sought. It's a lurch toward bad government, inadequate government, incompetent government. In some cases, it's driven by spite. In others, by sheer cluelessness. Ultimately, we will all pay a price for Trump's nihilism. The most recent example is the chaos at the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Trump has been unable to establish a proper legacy of his own, so he's intent on erasing his predecessors. And you could extend that gene to the State Department, where yeah. career diplomats say they're setting them back in terms of diplomacy a decade or so by not filling any of these positions, by not having the relationships with our allies that we've had previously. This is a huge deal. Um, uh, uh, Rex Tillerson, who, uh, unlike many uh, uh, appointees, many Trump appointees, is, is actually a sane person and a very intelligent person. But he's running the State Department, uh, you know, as if he's uh, um, some sort of uh, junior accountant with a, with a green eye shade uh, who's been asked to, to, um, to, to cut costs overall, and, you know, damn the diplomacy. And, and the result is that droves of, of the most senior diplomats are are leaving and taking with them expertise and contacts uh, that are not just vital but necessary in a crisis and there's always a crisis a crisis always arises we're in one right now with North Korea um, it's just uh, it, it's astounding and very dangerous what's happened in the State Department but it's happening in other places as well there's no uh, director of a, of a White House science office at a time of, of uh, and and the staffing has been been cut more than in, in half. Well, that's one thing. It probably saves some money, but but at a time of uh, extremely rapid scientific and technological change, uh, you would think the president would want some advice right. on that. And and presidents since Gerald Ford have, this president doesn't. Um, it's uh, it's going to take a long time to put these to to put this back together again uh, and in the meantime i just think it's a dangerous thing for the country and, and john uh, we we try not to uh, uh try to keep everything in context try not to get too excited by the tweets and and by some of the more outrageous statements but when the president starts dealing in conspiracy theories, when he starts believing his own conspiracy theories, when he starts spewing this out, it, 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 to me at least, that, that is a disturbing look into his state of mind and his inability to actually sort out reality from those conspiracy theories that he, a lot of his supporters, and a lot of Russian bots in social media push out every day. This is one of those moments, given what's escalating right now uh, on the Korean Peninsula, it's one of those moments where this shows, throws in a very sharp relief these questions we ask, because I, I'm, I, I, we talk about whether Trump is manipulative, whether he does things because he's calculating, or whether he's nuts, right? Those are kind of, we have arguments about that all the time. And I've always thought, well, it could be kind of both. He could be a little bit, uh, a little bit not I need to completely in his right mind and also manipulative. But in this moment when you see an international crisis building that could draw us into a catastrophic war, to have the president going around and re-raising re questions, does he actually believe that Barack Obama was born in Kenya? Is there some chance that the president actually now believes that that his tape was that his voice is not on the Access Hollywood tape. Is it possible that the pre those would be signals of someone who has has become in a fundamental way 
I don't want to sound too much like Mika Brzezinski here, but Unstable. fundamentally unhinged. Unstable. And at yeah. this moment, when you're talking about the possibility of a government shutdown with a conflict, with the, 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 war, the prospect of war, as I just suggested, it is genuinely, this is the kind of story that will have resonance with people because it is genuinely profoundly unsettling, not in some partisan way, but the notion of the president knocking around saying these things that are just untethered from reality. That's scary. And, uh, Willie, a change from this time last year or two years ago, whenever it was, when he apologized. Right. When right. he admitted right. that he was the one on the tape. When he let insiders know that he really didn't think Barack Obama was born in Kenya, that he was just trolling him because right. he believed that he put Kenya on right. his on his Harvard application. Right, his application. So he could get into Harvard. So he was trolling Barack Obama. And playing to and, his base. And, and playing to his base. And was very conscious of it. Now the fact that you, we get these images of him stumbling around at Mar-a-Lago, actually believing that that wasn't his voice on the tape, that it was some grand conspiracy, that, that Barack Obama may actually have been born in Kenya, suggests that even in the past year, uh, maybe his abilities mentally have declined even more. Or last night tweeting that it was the deep state perhaps that helped Hillary Clinton with the email scandal. But I think also all, this is all about the ground he has softened with the claims of fake news and everything else. Don't believe your eyes and your ears. And now he's softened it enough where you can go back and say, there's some other things we should look at again, like the Access Hollywood tape. Remember how that was such a big deal? But the problem is the press doing those privately. things publicly. Right, doing right. them privately. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Yeah. If you were doing it on Twitter, I'd almost be more comforted because it would be right. like, well, he's just trolling it's people. To his but this is, these are the, these, the, the reporting suggests that these private conversations with senators where he pulls them aside mm -hmm. and says, you know what? Uh, I but I think he's convinced place. himself at this May point. Okay, maybe. Well, and that's Gene, that access and Gene, that's what's so disturbing is it sounds like he has convinced himself and he really is detached from a reality uh, and, and is now embracing these conspiracy theories that he no, that's at one that's, time knew were false. That's profoundly concerning, Joe. It really is. And, and I mean, we all need to just sort of step back and, and read these stories again. There's a story, time story in the, in the Post. And, and just think about the prospect that the President of the United States is, is not fully in his right mind. I mean, let's just say it. Is not, um, is not fully in touch with reality uh, and, is, and is worsening. And because he wasn't saying um, these things during the campaign, um, you know, this job has a lot of pressures. Um, this job has a lot of frustrations. Uh, and um, I, I don't think you can look at him without wondering if there's a, um, a concerning deterioration there in his mental state. All right, Eugene Robinson will be reading your piece in the Washington Post this morning. Thanks so much, as always. Good to see you. Coming Good up, here. the great Peggy Noonan joins us on set at the top of the hour. We'll be right back on Morning Joe. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.